All right, we are live on Fix It Friday on Facebook. Welcome to everyone who has tuned in or is uh, about to tune in. Uh, we're just um, going to get started shortly. It's a couple more minutes to let a few people join and then we'll get straight into it on Fix It Friday. We'll be right with you. Okay, it's just ticked over 12 o'clock, so I think we should get started with uh, Fix It Friday. And today we're covering off on bunions, um, three steps to foot success. And I'm excited to have you uh, here joining me uh, because it obviously means that you're interested in feet as well. And uh, I know that's strange for a lot of people, but I love uh, everything foot related. And uh, as a result, we're gonna cover some really good stuff today. So uh, once again, if you're tuning in on Facebook, um, then uh, welcome and we are uh, going live. And if you have joined us on the meeting uh, on Zoom, then uh, welcome too to you as well. I can see uh, people logging in here. And uh, feel free if you uh, jumped on this webinar via the Zoom link to use the uh, q and I'm gonna to endeavor to answer all your questions uh, that you have around bunions, but if you've got something that you really want uh, to ask, feel free to, to pop it in and I'll, I'll see if I can answer it as I go along. If not, I'll stick around at the end of today after 20 or 30 minutes, depending on how fast I talk, and then I'll, I'll answer all your questions so you can answer those live. All right, let's, let's get started. So, I'll, uh, here we go. So first of all, you might be wondering who am I and who, who are we? Who is Freestyle Feet? Well, um, first of all, I'll start with me. My name's Andrew Wind. I am a sport and exercise titled physiotherapist. Uh, that means that I've done my postgraduate masters. I did that at La Trobe here in Melbourne in Australia for those of you that are overseas. And uh, I've worked as a physio now for coming up to 20 years. A lot of that time I've worked on foot and ankles and uh, and hence my passion for it. I'm sitting here right now in my treatment room in Melbourne uh, in COVID lockdown at Borland Sports and Physiotherapy Centre. So that's a sports medicine clinic in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. And uh, that's where I consult and see patients. We have a podiatrist, a sports doctor, and a few other people as part of the team here. Um, Freestyle Feet is a company I'm a director of and, and our uh, primary aim is to solve foot and ankle problems. Um, so based on the clinical experience I've had um, and perhaps uh, the, the lack of education amongst um, health professionals in this particular area, um, I'm really passionate about um, sourcing um, designs, making products um, and educating both health professionals and the general public on what we can do to solve foot and ankle problems. So that's who we are. Now I've got a medical disclaimer there. It's really important. Um, that you don't take this as specific medical advice for you personally. Always seek uh, professional health um, care in a advice. So that could be a physiotherapist or it could be a podiatrist or um, indeed a doctor. And uh, more than happy to give you some suggestions there. So this is gonna be fairly general, um, not specific to you. So always ask your specific therapist before um, undertaking any of my suggestions today. Okay, so. This is what we're gonna cover off on today in the next 20 minutes. We're gonna cover off on answering the common questions I get asked day in, day out, here in the clinic and have done for 20 years. Um, what are bunions? Um, have I got a bunion? What causes a bunion? And if I've got one, what can I do about it? And lastly, really importantly, can I prevent bunions? Uh, I've got a and A at the end. Uh, I'll stick around for as long as needed to answer all your questions. And if you do stick with me to the end on this rainy Friday in Melbourne, um, then I've got a, a little special offer for you as well. Okay, so what are bunions? Uh, that's the burning question that um, I, get, I get asked really regularly. A lot of people email me about this one. And bunions, bunions are these. Um, I know that's a little frightening to look at and I'm, um, I'm hoping I'm not shocking too many people here, uh, but this is a bunion here, um, this bony protuberance on the inside part of the foot. And this is 
also um, a bunion um, or bunions. Um, so you can see the really, the extra bone here that uh, has popped up, um, developed over time. This isn't something that is a, um, an overnight thing. This happens, um, yeah, look really uh, slowly over time. Um, and in particular, you can see, uh, if I just put the, the little highlight around here, this looks red and irritated. And that, that's where the pain often comes from. We're also getting some crossing over on this particular foot. Um, of those, those uh, the second toe crossing over onto the first because of the deviation. You can see that here as well. So this is what we refer to as a bunion. A lot of people get it confused uh, with an arthritic big toe that's slightly different. And so oh, I can see some uh, familiar names in here that, uh, that are just joining us, welcome. Um, so yeah, those are what bunions are. So a little bit scary. Now, the, I promise you, this is the only really technical um, scientific part of it. Uh, I've, I could go into major detail, but I won't today. I'll keep it light and simple for you to understand. So this is what we would consider a normal foot on the left. And over on the right here, we've got the bunion deformity. I've drawn a few lines on there and I'll talk you through those. This is really important to understand. Once you understand this, then you'll uh, realize that the management of how we, we fix them and how we prevent them yeah, all makes sense. So let's have a little look together. So let's start over here. This is a big toe joint here. Okay, so this is our, our big toe joint and this is the, the great toe. Here are our little toes out to the fifth here. And these are called better tarsal, these, these long bones, and then these are called phalanges. We have the same thing on our hands. Uh, the long bones, uh, if you can see my hand there, okay, uh, are the metacarpals, and then um, our fingers would be the phalanges. All right, now I'll draw your attention to here. So this angle here is the hallux valgus. That's the scientific name for a bunion, a hallux valgus. Um, that refers to this angle in here. Anything less, if we drew a little um, a radius in here and measured that, anything less than 15 degrees is considered normal. Now, if we go above 15 degrees, and I think you'd agree with me, it's probably about 15 degrees there, maybe, maybe even a little less, 10, certainly normal. If we go above 15 degrees, we start to um, get into bunion territory. Now, we'll, we'll classify bunions uh, in a second on my next slide. However, look at this angle here. So this is starting, if that's a sort of 90 out here, this is definitely approaching 45 or greater. So it's, it's perhaps even 50 degrees. Uh, maybe even pushing 60 degrees here. So this is the angle formed along the long bone here, the metatarsal and the phalange of the first toe joint. So why have I got this line here and these other lines here? Well, let me just talk you through that because the bunions are more than just the bump that, that forms at the big toe joint here. That's the bump, the bony bit. This angle here is called the intermetatarsal angle. And you don't need to remember this, but this angle here is considered normal if it's less than between eight and 10 degrees. So eight to 10 degrees here where these lines would intersect. So if I followed these two lines down off the screen, they would be uh, under 10 degrees. Now, once they get over that amount, that's considered abnormal. And if we measure this angle here, you can see it's much greater. And this is where a lot of bunion treatments fail because they don't take into consideration what is happening further up the foot. We see the prominence, and that's what jumps out at us at this angle here, but this only happens after there's changes already taking place up here. And you'll see why that's important as we get through the next slides. All right, so we define bunions as a normal, mild, moderate, or severe. Now, this is a really important take home point. So normal is less than 15 degrees. So that's the intermetatarsal angle. I'll see if I can draw them for you um, on, on the spot here. So uh, the, if, we, if we draw a line, a straight line, straight down the metatarsal here, and then we round another line down here, by the middle of that, that's the 15 degree angle, normal. Now, if we run that line again down the metatarsal shaft, and then down the phalangeal shaft, and we measured this angle here, you would uh, see how this is much greater angle than it's, it's definitely borderline 40. 
Now, it's important to distinguish between them because the treatments are very different and what you're gonna do about them is very, very different. If you have mild or moderate hallux valgus or a bunion, this angle is mild or moderate, we can definitely do something. You can do something about this today, right now, tonight. If it's more severe, you can still do something about it and I'll go through the options shortly, but it's much, much harder to correct. So we can definitely, we know we can pull back mild bunions uh, with the intervention that you can do a fair bit of yourself. Moderates, they're a bit harder, a bit, take a bit longer, a bit trickier, severe, very, very difficult. Chances of success without surgery are much, much lower. So this is a progressive thing. So you wanna make sure you get onto these as fast as possible, which is hopefully why you're here today. All right, so that is the definitions of between um, mild uh, all the way to severe, and that's important. All right, hopefully we've already covered off on and uh, we're, running, we're running okay so far. I'm talking fast, but that's because I get excited. Um, we've covered hopefully what are bunions and do I have a bunion? And now we're gonna go through what uh, causes uh, bunions. So we'll, we'll just clear that. And let's run through that now. All right, now there's a bit of a clue up on the screen already. And uh, there's, there's not just one or two things, there's quite a lot of causes for bunions, um, but uh, hopefully you've seen the, the, um, the little clue in the background here. And yes, shoes and tight fitting shoes, high heels, stilettos are a major contributor. Not the only thing, um, perhaps the, the biggest thing is, is what I've got here. And that is something that um, unfortunately we can't change and that's genetics. So genetics for bunions, if your mother, um, your mother's mother um, has had bunions, uh, and I'm obviously speaking to the females here, but uh, males can get them. But unfortunately for females, they're three times more likely to get bunions than males. Uh, and there is a, a large genetic component. So it's worth checking back over the family history to see um, what has gone on there. But we won't spend too long talking about genetics because we can't do anything about it. It's what we call in the scientific community and non-modifiable risk factor. But there are some modifiable risk factors and that's what we're gonna cover off on uh, in the next couple of minutes. So high heels are absolutely a disaster for a few reasons, mostly because they're usually narrow toe. And you can see here in this particular person that, uh, that her little toe is, is clearly getting squashed almost out of the shoe and the big toe will be getting the same degree of squashing. So it's gonna squish the toes together and make them go together like that. The position that the high heels put them in, not just the narrow toes, but then they're up on the, um, the, the balls of the feet, makes it even worse, because then it mucks up the angle further back in the foot, which now you know is actually part of the contribution. So footwear is definitely something that we need to discuss today. Now, Unlike a lot of other uh, medical professionals that'll say high heels should be banned, I don't take that approach with patients. If high heels make you feel fantastic and you love wearing them, um, then I will rarely say, unless it's severe, that you should stop wearing them. Um, I'll, I will recommend uh, that it's not ideal, but uh, uh, as, as I, I'm not a high heel wearer myself, um, I can't necessarily understand that feeling, but I do my best to to know that it's important to, to certain um, numbers of you. So um, what we do say is, well, well, make sure you look after your feet outside of wearing those heels and try to limit the time. And if you're not wearing your heels, then it's a great time to work on your feet. And um, our, one of our key products, the Flamingo feet, uh, are often worn at the end of the day of wearing tight, narrow shoes um, that are not ideal. Uh, but um, yeah, so it helps to undo some of the, the damage that they cause. So um, that's, that's sort of my, my position on them. I, these are not um, my pictures. This is a company called Lems who make these sort of natural shoes, but they've got some great pictures. So I don't think they'll mind uh, me using them and giving them a little uh, free publicity here because we've got some wonderful uh, x-ray shots of what happens in a traditional shoe where there is a narrow toe box. And really interestingly, uh, if, you, if you ask a medical professional, do shoes cause bunions? I say possibly. Um, but if you look further into the research, in some of the few 
uh, non-shoe wearing populations, um, so barefoot populations. Um, obviously, there's not many left in the world that uh, run around in bare feet. They do not have any incidence of any bunion. So you would have to uh, mount a reasonable argument that shoes have got something to do with it. And if you look at um, countries, uh, statistics that wear a lot of shoes, particularly tight high heels, um, then they do have a relatively higher incidence of bunions reported. So I think it's safe to say, and it's fairly obvious here with these pictures, that shoes do have something to do with it. So these are sort of natural style um, barefoot shoes that are nice wide toe boxes. And there's some uh, commercial shoes on the market. Uh, New Balance is uh, I'm, I'm not sponsored by New Balance or anything like that, but New Balance do have one of the wider fitting styles. The other brands do too. And that gives the toes plenty of room to move. And you can see the difference here quite clearly that this toe has got nowhere to go but across here in this shoe and got plenty of room to move here. So shoes are important. All right, so hopefully we've already covered that, uh, what bunions are. Um, hopefully you know now, you maybe you've had a look at your foot and had a look at the angles and you can work out, have I got a bunion or is there one, um, is there one actually happening? Um, we've answered that and we've gone into briefly the causes. So now you wanna know what you can do about it. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Andrew, you, you promised us three simple um, solutions and, and that's what I'm gonna get to. Okay, so um, first of all, before we get into my three simple um, approach steps to, to fixing most foot problems actually, you will probably be asking, what about surgery? I've heard it's really bad and I don't want surgery. Look, surgery always should be the last resort. And I really, uh, I didn't want to go into too much detail. I didn't want to put up some of my previous sort of more medical um, graphic slides of, of bunion surgery. Uh, but suffice to say, I've seen thousands uh, of post-operative bunion patients. Um, that's how uh, I first actually got into foot and ankle things. Uh, and I did all the post-operative management. So removing sutures and teaching people how to walk again and all their exercises. And having seen lots and lots and lots of these, it's first of all, it's not as bad as you think. Uh, for a severe case, and there's an x-ray, this is a real patient uh, that I saw post-operatively seen here in Melbourne, operated on by one of the, the top foot and ankle surgeons in Melbourne. This is their x-ray before, and the x-ray on the right is the x-ray after. I'll just talk you through very briefly what they do. So the, what they've done here is, uh, this little uh, screw here is a uh, correction of the second toe, which is a clawed toe, uh, we won't go into that. Uh, but here is the, the great toe, and what's, uh, it's a little bit hazy, but They've had to cut the bone here. So this is called a scar osteotomy. And then they've cut a little wedge of bone down here in the phalanx to straighten it all up and then put a little staple that hold it there. So there's a couple of screws here. You can see one of them there that's holding the bone that's been cut and straightened back up. And then they've shaved the excess bone back on here. Now previously, 30, 40, 50 years ago, the standard operation um, was a bunionectomy, which was just shaving the bone here. And lo and behold, some were successful, took away the bump, some came back. And now you know why, is that the mechanics of the whole foot, the whole foot and ankle contribute to what ends up becoming just the bunion bit. So now you know more than what the, the medicos knew about 50 years ago. And so we no longer, well, hopefully, um, no longer um, surgeons are shaving just the bone back because we know more likely it comes back again, okay? So now they actually cut the bone. There's a new operation as well that goes one step further and fuses the joint further up here uh, that I won't go into today, but that's proving it's called the 3D bunion operation. That's being done in the US a fair bit as well. So it's certainly an attempt to straighten the whole thing and the underlying causes and perhaps what becomes the one of the only options uh, for a severe bunion. All right, but what if I don't want surgery? Well, that's fine. Hopefully you are on the prevention side of things. And here's the big ore. All right, how are we going for time? We're doing pretty well. I'll keep it going here. So here's my simple three-step formula. Now this is for bunions, but this is actually for a lot of other foot things as well. And we've tried to really simplify a really complex topic down um, to something you can start doing yourself. 
So step number one, you've got to unlock your foot. Most feet I see that come in with an issue are all seized up and they don't move and as well as they should. So we call that hypomobile joints. And I'll show you some videos on the next slide of what um, we do to unlock it. So you can see this is using a ball to get into these joints in here. Uh, that is going to help unlock the, uh, the, the foot, get the joints moving. Because if they're stuck, we've got no chance of aligning them if these joints all are not moving. So I'll use my hands to do manipulations uh, on, on these joints if they're really stuck. Uh, but uh, you can get a fair bit done just from using one of these trigger balls. All right, step number two, align. So we, once we've loosened everything up, we've got to get everything where it can be. Now, really importantly, some things cannot be realigned. If it has been there for a long time, this bunion, then it's, it's uncorrectable with um, your hands, then we're going to have a really poor result. So the uncorrectable ones that you cannot realign, unfortunately, a lot of those, if they become painful, do go into surgery. But let's say we can correct things and we can realign them. Uh, then there's a few ways of doing it. This is how we do it. This is with our, our signature silicon toe spreaders called Flamingo Feet. And you can see that they're nicely straightening up the toes and creating space around here. And these, the beautiful part about these things is that they're wearable. So you can walk around in them. So unlike a lot of the other toe spreaders on the market, and I've tested them all, you can't walk around in them. And that is a big difference because this leads us on to step three. Well, as soon as I take these off, Andrew, aren't they just the toes going to spring back? The answer is, well, they will, unless you do something about them to keep them there. And that's where we use the muscles here. So we strengthen the muscles. And here's a little uh, snapshot of just some of the very, um, very broad amount of muscles that we've got in our feet um, that do wonderful things. You can see how complex this is in this third picture here on keeping things where they're supposed to be. So if you just do step one, you might get some pain relief. You do step two, you're starting to reverse some of these issues. That's where a lot of people leave it. But step three, then hopefully you'll be able to keep that good alignment and, and your foot will do what you want it to do. All right, so some examples. Now the first point I've got up here is start today. This is really important. If you do nothing else from today, but start doing a couple of these things for your feet, you're either going to prevent a bunion or hopefully start reversing it if you're on the more, more milder side of things. All right, and I want to take you through these. So let's have a look at number one. This is unlocking the foot. This is the step one. And look what's happening to those joints. And imagine the muscles as well as we roll over that ball. So that's your foot. That's our, our trigger ball. I've got, I've got one here. Uh, it's a hard core. So the core is very solid and, and, and quite heavy. And the outer uh, is a soft medical silicon rubber. And it grips onto the fascia, the connective tissue in the foot, and starts to loosen all the muscles up. So this is particularly good for the muscles. If you haven't got one of those, that's okay. Start with the tennis ball. All right, number two, now massaging. We're still unlocking. Now, this is a real patient, these are my hands. And showing you some of the secret spots that you need to get into. So look where I'm massaging there. So I'm, ma I'm massaging, we'll watch that again. I'm massaging between the metatarsals. As you know from my first couple of slides, the intermetatarsal angle, very, very important to get into. Get in here, so get the, get the thumbs in there. Now you can do this yourself if you can reach there or you can get someone else to do that, or you'll see in the next video that you can use a little, little piece of equipment to get in that as well. So I've shown you a couple of little, my secret little spots that now are not so secret, which is a good thing. So I'm, I'm working up into that spot and I'm doing the same thing underneath and I'm now I'm working on the, the muscle on the side there, that's called abductor hallucis. Now that's a muscle that holds the big toe in good alignment. So he's a very important muscle to work on. And often it gets a little bit grumpy and so massaging it makes it work better. All right, so we're still in unlocking phase, step number one. And here's our special little toy. Again, silicon with special little knobby bits that look painful and they're a little uncomfortable. And you can see what I'm doing there. 
and watch that again, same thing. So this is a couple of things, getting my thumbs a rest and getting sometimes my thumbs too big to even fit into that spot and your thumb might be too, or your fingers. So you dig into there and you loosen that spot up where the soft tissues will have contracted. Uh, I can assure you when the surgeons do operations, they have to release those soft tissues because they have been contracted and held tight over such a long period of time that they have to surgically release them. You can, I can assure you, you can do that yourself, either with your thumbs or with a little, little toy like that. All right, now, uh, we're going to go on to um, step number three here, okay? Because alignment, you can do, oh, all my videos are playing. Um, alignment, you can do with the flamingo feet. You can also do from an, another few ways. It's not just that product. That's our unique one. Um, there's bunion braces that you'll have probably seen there everywhere. I'm not a huge fan of them because you've got to wear them overnight and it's very, very passive. So they do brace it and hold it in good alignment. So I like that. Uh, but you can't walk around with most of those braces on. And so it, 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 they also only just address the big toe. So it's a brace that pulls it back across. So um, I, I've prescribed these to patients in the past, had very limited success with them, um, hence why we looked um, and created something that worked on the whole foot, being the flamingo feet. So um, there's also other options, orthotics from your podiatrist or your prosthetist and orthotist, so someone to make an insert. That's also trying to do the same thing, align and hold everything in place. All right, now, step number three was about strengthen. So we've got to strengthen the muscles. This is the same patient from here. You can see that they haven't got a huge bump yet, but the alignment is not great. So we can see this intermetatarsal angle is starting to be a problem. So this person really needs to get working on it. All right, so I've asked this, this patient to spread their toes, in particular the big toe. Trying to get, and I'll show you on the screen again, trying to get the big toe to move across into abduction out here to strengthen this muscle. And you're noticing how much struggle that is. So she can't do this. She is struggling, she's trying. And this might be you, you might be doing it now. Feel free to have a go, slip the shoes off and have a go. If you're struggling with that, please persist. That's normal. When you start doing this, the muscles don't know what to do and you need to wake them up. So please persist. If you're really struggling, you can't get going, then this is where I want you to start today, as soon as you hang up from this webinar. So what this person's done, and we'll see it again, is they've used their hands to move the big toe across into good alignment. And you can see the arrow there and they're pressing the toe down into the ground to start strengthening the muscles that hold them in the right place. Now I've got literally about 50 of these sort of exercises and I'll prescribe different ones for um, what I see in front of me. But you can get started. This is for most bunion things. So if you're asking, and I get this a lot as well, but Andrew, I've got, I don't have a bunion, I've got something on the other side, a bunionette. If this is you, then no problems. And I'll just highlight this again for you. So let's say the alignment issue is over here and the little toe is getting squashed into the fourth toe and you're developing a bump there. That's called a tailor's bunion, um, from kneeling down with your feet tucked underneath you as a tailor would, the old, old, old uh, tailor many years ago, or a bunionette, the little version of the, the um, big bunion. So if you've got a bunionette, then all the same things apply still. You gotta look back up through here. Um, same exercises, but reverse it. So the little toe, so your little toe, just like we have on our finger, is going outwards there. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, on to uh, my final exercise for you to start from at home. So let's have a look at that. So again, this patient's got the, the flamingo feet on, the toe spreaders, uh, that's helping get the toes in good alignment. If you haven't got these, no problems. You can start by spreading your toes out and then raise up on the balls of your feet. So this can be done initially seated. So you'd be sitting down, raising up onto the balls of your feet with your toes spread apart and then, and then progress into standing. And that will strengthen, that'll strengthen all the little muscles in your feet and some of the big ones as well. But the important point is that you start off with the toes in good alignment. So you're strengthening the joints and muscles in the right position to start off with. All right, so hopefully you've had a look at those, you're gonna remember them or you're gonna practice them straight away, but that's what you wanna to start today. 
All right, we're nearly there. So thanks for, for hanging in there. Uh, we'll get rid of all my uh, videos, which are going to keep playing in the background. Okay, so what do you do now? Well, you take action, you do something about it. Uh, don't wait till tomorrow, don't live in fear that you're gonna end up with toes like this. These are too far gone for me. I cannot fix these. These are real feet from a patient preoperatively um, that I, I couldn't fix. This is too far gone. I don't want that to be you. So if you do one thing from today, that is take action and start working on your feet. All right, well, hopefully we've covered off on all these things. Um, what they are, do I have one? What are the causes? What can you do about it? And now you know that you can actually prevent bunions from progressing. And so I will, uh, in a second, open it up to uh, questions. Um, but as a gesture for those of you who have stayed with us to the end, um, here's a special code for you. If you want to use this, feel free. It's a one-off uh, code. It's Fix My Feet. It'll give you 15% off um, any of the products at freestylefeet.com.au. That's where you'll find uh, the flamingo feet, uh, the toe spreaders. Um, that do wonderful things for a lot of foot things, in particular bunions, you'll find the balls, you'll find um, all the things there. We're constantly adding and developing new products to solve uh, all sorts of different foot problems so you can get to work on your feet yourself. And that's part of our mission. All right, well, really thank you. I wanna thank you for taking the time on this Friday to tune in. Uh, I know it wasn't necessarily the most convenient time for everyone, but um, hopefully you, you tuned in live and you got a lot out of that and you're gonna start doing something about it. Fix It Friday for the next three weeks because we're doing four weeks in a row, we're gonna cover uh, topics that you've asked for. So I get emails every week uh, to info at freestylefeet.com.au uh, or my ball and sports physio email, it's Andrew W at ball and sports physio.com.au asking me things, um, can, what do I do about this? What can I do for this? And uh, based on that, we're gonna be covering off on um, really common um, questions. So in the next couple of weeks, if you've got something Bernie you'd like me to cover, um, I, I can, I've already decided next week's topic, which will be out soon. Uh, but if you've got something else you would like um, to, to cover off on, then um, feel free to, to ask. Um, and I'll see if I can cover off on it. Uh, I've got a few questions coming through. Oh, oh more comments, okay. Thanks for organizing. Um, Interesting, yeah, you're, you're most welcome. Um, you have a feed us egg, thank you, that's great. Um, that was it, that was informative, great. I'm, I'm glad it was, I hope it was. And hopefully you got what you wanted out of it. Um, any other questions coming through there? If I've done my job well, then hopefully I've answered all the common ones that, that consistently are asked. Here's ones coming through. Thank you so much. Uh, great to hear surgery for people with severe cases much improved now. Yes, it is. Um, oh, every person I've, I've, almost every person I've seen um, before um, going into an operation is very, very, very fearful. And, and I understand that. Um, I haven't had a foot operation, but I've um, had a few others in my um, athletic career. And uh, look, it's a scary thing, uh, but the surgery is so much better now. There's uh, in, certainly in Melbourne, I know in Sydney as well, I uh, deal with some patients that uh, fly down from, from there. Uh, there's, the surgeons can now do something called a minimally invasive technique, which is where they only make very small cuts and uh, you, you have much less scarring. So as a result, um, you, you recover much faster. So uh, it was, uh, which is fantastic for the patients. Not so good for physios because you don't need us as much because you get better on your own um, doing some simple exercises, which is, which is really good. Um, so certainly if you have tried conservative things that, things that we've covered off on today and you're not getting anywhere or you're in the severe case then um, and, you, and you're really in a lot of pain, then do seek uh, help. There are some um, really great surgical options now that's much better than it used to be. Um, and just someone, yep, you bet you, no, no worries. Thanks for saying it. some, there's some um, really nice comments there. I really appreciate those. And anything else you want to ask me about anything foot related, happy to open it up. Um, I'll, I've, got, I've got time if you 
have anything else that you'd like to just pop it in the, the Q&A. Um, okay, here's some, some coming through, okay, uh, in the chat. You can use the chat if you like, or you can go to the Q&A um, section at the bottom of your screen. Um, so how often do you do the exercises per day? Fantastic question. I missed that. Definitely once a day. Um, I'm really reasonable with what you can fit in. Uh, five, 10 minutes a day of all those would be plenty um, to get started. You'll get much better results if you do more of them. Um, so uh, do, do them five times a day and you'll, you'll progress really quickly. Like you'll notice dramatic changes um, really, really quickly. Uh, so within weeks, but otherwise um, on the couch of an evening is a great time to, uh, especially if you're bare feet, you, you can look at your feet and you can do a few um, you can do a few little um, exercises, it's a good time. So uh, a couple of times a day is better. Uh, next one here, do you provide uh, referrals for surgeons for severe cases? Um, I absolutely do. Uh, I'm, I know a lot of the surgeons, probably 10 of the foot and ankle surgeons in Melbourne that uh, I, I see their patients on a regular basis. Um, do you want to send us an email to that one? I just uh, might refrain from um, uh, dropping names, I guess, live. So do you, want to, do you want to send us an email on that one? And I'll definitely answer that. So info at freestylefeet.com.au and that'll come through to us and I will um, give you some referrals. Uh, what else? Can I Thanks, I bought the flamingo thing. It's on its way. Um, yep, yeah, good, I've got bungees on both feet. Thankfully no pain now since I stopped wearing high heels due to work. Um, I love my Vivo bare feet. Yep, yeah, fantastic. Worn them for a few years now and don't wear shoes inside our home. No pain, but bungees still there. Okay, hopefully on the right track. Um, how long do I wear the flamingo separated for each day? Okay, lots of questions there, I'll answer them all. Um, so first of all, congratulations um, on um, your getting on top of it. Once you have developed the bony, we call it exostosis. Um, so the bony bump, um, I'll use the model. Hopefully you can see that there. The bony bump, once that's developed, unfortunately you can't get rid of it. So if the bony bump is there, I have seen cases that once the alignment was restored, the bony bump got smaller, but it never disappeared. And it's unlikely it will disappear. So you are stuck with that, but, um, that's okay because you shouldn't get pain from that. It's when the joint capsule gets really, really stretched and synovitic or irritated or inflamed, but that's what gives you the pain in the toe. So, okay, stuck with the bony bump, but you can absolutely change alignment. I've seen this, um, I've witnessed it in patients. Um, so there's, uh, you can, you, there's definitely hope there. So you're on the right track, do those exercises, Unlock all the little secret spots, not just on the side here, but the ones you've learned today up in here and underneath. So unlock your foot, um, align it, which you're gonna do with the flamingo feet and then strengthen and watch what happens over, over a couple of months. Um, and how long do I wear them? We recommend starting with these uh, 20 to 30 minutes a day, uh, just as a safe place to start. Most people, including myself, can tolerate them for many, many hours. I had a patient yesterday, put them on and three hours later felt really fine. Um, the, the flamingo feet are really soft and they're designed like that on purpose. Some of the other toe spreads we looked at uh, were too hard and too uncomfortable. And what we really want to have happen is you wear these for a long period of time and walk around in them, bare feet or in socks or in Ugg boots. And you can even do your yoga or Pilates class in them or some are even weight training in them. Very similar to um, uh, the old Vibram Five Fingers shoes that that separates the toes and then you exercise because now you're working your muscles to keep the toes in good alignment and that's part of the, the magic. So start with half an hour, double it every few days and you'll get up to a few hours a day very quickly. Um, this question here, do you have the little foot massage cube for sale at BSPC? Uh, Lorraine, we do actually, um, not many. Um, there's, I think we might be getting close out of stock, but uh, yes, we do. Um, it's called the foot mobilizer. Uh, it's um, a weird shaped little thing. It's really good for hand issues as well, as a slide aside. Um, oh, your flamingos are helping lots. Fantastic. Hooray, good to hear. Um, we have had extraordinary success with these since, um, with patients since 
um, that we launched them um, probably six, nine months ago. Been using them in the clinic for a couple of years and getting really good results. All right, keep the questions coming. Um, and is there anything else you want from what's time? 12.40. I normally talk fast, but um, I've, um, hopefully I've covered uh, everything for you. Any, any other foot things, anything at all that I can help with? More than happy to answer now. If not, shoot me an email. Love to hear from you. And we're here to help. That's uh, my job as a physio and uh, love, love helping. So feel free to email us. If you've got a burning topic you want covered, I'll see what I can do. I'll do my best. If it's uh, in the most popular um, topics, then I'll cover those in the next Fix It Friday um, for common foot and ankle conditions. We started with bunions because it's most common. Uh, oh, there's one more. How do you tell if you're a severe case or just stuck with a bony bump that can still be realigned? Okay, so um, you need to measure, you need to measure the angle. Now, I know you, you're not gonna pull out one of these, which is uh, what we call a goniometer. And, and measure that particular angle. So I would, I would measure that, that angle of variation here to tell um, how, how severe it is. But, but irrespective, it's worth a go. You, it, I always, and I think um, everyone will agree, surgery should be the last resort, not the first. And so my first question back to you uh, is, can you correct it? So can you, can you straighten that toe up with your hands um, or with, with your muscles? I've got my... Um, headphones wrapped around the toes um, can you straighten it up and if the answer is yes you can then it's not too late you can do something about it if it is stuck um, and you can't correct it it's too far deviated then you can still do something about the pain but you will not be able to straighten that right back up so you should be able to tell um, whether whether that's correctable or not um, it's worth a go. It's uh, put a bit of effort in. You need, you need to do more than 10 days. You need to do a 12 week um, consistent chipping away at it before you can really make a, an assumption as to whether you're, you're gonna get there or not. Hopefully that answers that for you. I um, just saw another uh, comment come through here. Um, problem with bunions, will it affect the knees alignment? Uh, and the answer Jessica is yes, it can. Um, depends on your foot type, so many different unique factors to you, but 100% bunion issues can um, cause foot alignment. I'll try and demonstrate why, because you know, I'll use this more flexible foot here. So here, here, we, here we have a fairly well aligned foot. Hopefully you can see that clearly. If a bunion starts forming, we're heading across here. When I go to stand on that, and I go to get that flat on the ground, Let's say this is the ground. If that bunion has, has started to deviate across, it's not so stable. The big toe can't push down and stabilize the whole foot and ankle. So this is a bit awkward, but hopefully it's working. So what will happen is you'll start to pronate. You'll pronate more. And once you pronate, when you roll in, your tibia, this bone here that's been cut off, your tibia starts to rotate. And the top end of your tibia is, of course, your knee. So once the bunion goes off to the side, foot is less stable on the inside of it. Foot rolls in, tibia starts to rotate, knee starts to get some rotation through it. Now, you might be able to deal with that and you might be able to deal with it fine. Some people can, some people cannot. And that's that same argument around what actually causes the bunions. Uh, so we know some factors down at the foot will definitely contribute to it. But there's also an argument that further up around the hip, we know the hip and the foot work together, that's for sure. Uh, it could be at the knee or, or the hip or even higher up, that if something isn't working well there and you tend to roll in further, it may not cause a bunion, but it's certainly gonna um, encourage the toe to move across more. So um, this is a two-way street, like we're learning in a lot of parts of the body like the, um, the gut and the brain, it's a two-way street. So they affect each other. So yes, can affect it. Oh, yeah, so I think I've just answered that. I think Jessica, does knee alignment cause bunions? The answer is it can. It can go either way. So you do need to look higher up as well. 
Uh, another one question through there. Um, excellent, that makes sense to try for 12 weeks and decide if it can be moved or not. Thank you, no problems. Need to seek treatment or seek you out. Uh, that's great. If you're in Melbourne, feel free to. Um, I, uh, at, yeah, I'm here for you. Uh, but uh, under COVID uh, uh, restrictions at the moment, it could be a bit tricky if you're not in Melbourne. Um, yeah, so hopefully you can get on top of it um, yourself. I am here, but um, part of the whole mission, purpose of Freestyle Feet is for us to be able to help more people like you um, without um, needing to go and get um, opinions and advice uh, whilst you should. Um, a lot of, uh, I know physios um, in particular, uh, their anatomy gets a bit rusty um, on the feet. I know mine did before I started going down that path. That's why I now teach um, courses to health professionals on foot and ankle and also I teach at the Trobe for the same thing to the master's group on foot and ankle conditions so we can um, up the level of care that's out there so you'll get better results but really wants you to be able to um, try and do a fair bit of this yourself. Uh, okay all right so 12.45 and if there's nothing further there then I will wrap it up and look forward to hearing from you. If you do have a great result, please let us know. Uh, absolutely love hearing uh, wins. If you have a loss as well, it's not working, then, then send that um, back to us as well. And uh, that's okay, maybe we can suggest something else too. So good luck with your bungs. I hope now you know all about them, how you're gonna prevent them. And number one, take action today, do something about it, start exercising your feet. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in another Fix It Friday next uh, next week all right thanks for tuning everyone we'll see you again soon